Hello, we are um, Toby and Jens from AdGuy, and your guys watching. Absolutely. You are watching. And you're watching Rock and Live. Keep on watching. Keep on watching. <laughs> Keep on watching. titles for the price of one. <laughs> um, no, no, seriously, uh, we had uh, different options for an album title and um, we really couldn't decide which one we should take. We had either Space Police or Defenders of the Crown. And um, while well, we really like both of the titles so much, um, both of the titles fitting to the album, uh, we couldn't really decide on one. So we just uh, thought about it and said, well, why don't we choose two titles? It's something very extraordinary. Ordinary, something very special, and um, fits good to the band, I think. Extraordinary and special, good. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we first had only Defenders of the Crown, it was a bit, we wanted to go for something monumental. And we thought, okay, we've always been true to ourselves as a band, we've always done things differently, uh, we have not exactly become the Rolling Stones, but we've become also a little successful. And um, that's why we thought, okay, we have always done things our way. If there is a real defender of the heavy metal crown, it's us. We are the defenders of the heavy metal crown. That's why we thought Defenders of the Crown was a great title. And then uh, there was also a song called Space Police, which we thought was a great title as well. I thought it sounded a little bit like Frank Zappa or, or David Bowie. It was a title that usually a heavy metal band would not choose. So, um, I thought it makes even a better title if nobody else would have the bravado and be brave enough as a heavy metal band to choose that title, Space Police. Why not call it Space Police? And then the record label said, like, ah, no, go for it. go for Defenders of the Crown. It's much better for a heavy metal record to market. So we said, hmm, the record label wants to have Defenders of the Crown, so we go for Space Police. And then we couldn't make up our minds. So we decided, okay, we take them both make it a huge conceptual album. Space Police, Defenders of the Crown. It sounds like a movie, like a conceptual, epic, whatever, but it, it doesn't make sense, but um, yeah, but it's, but it sounds good. <laughs> like, like so many things in heavy metal don't make sense, but they just sound good. <laughs> November. 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 We started recording in November and um, finished in January, I think. I think I think the last okay. the last bits and pieces we did early January yeah. and then mixed the album and it was I think mastered by the end of January. And remastered in February because we wanted to master the album again. It's gonna be remastered in February two thousand twenty five because of the uh, anniversary edition for example. Yeah, two thousand thirty five. It's going to be the remaster of the remaster of the album. So we got to keep the cash flow. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. Actually, though, there, have, there hasn't been a plan on in which direction the album should be going. Uh, we just started. We just uh, started and uh, thought, okay, let's see where where this is leading us. And um, well, what came out, in my opinion, is a uh, is an album that never denies our roots. Uh, you can definitely say where the band is coming from, but uh, it's also something that, that uh, we haven't done before. And it's, I think, a good combination for an album, for putting out something new. The basic idea for the guitar riff also came from Toby and he had a very, had a very uh, 
a very uh, a concrete idea <laughs> how, how it should sound in the end. So it, that was one of the risks where he really knew exactly how he wanted it to sound and there uh, was definitely no other way. So uh, credits for the guitar riff, definitely not to the guitar players this time <laughs> on this song. <laughs> yeah, but playing. But played by the guitar players, but I, I think it's not, it's not really a, it's not really a pop song. I think you know we've always had we've always had songs like that. If you if you see things that way, I mean, um, there has been stuff like Lavatory Love Machine. Yeah. There has been stuff like um, whatever. You know, we've always done all different sorts of songs, and that's always been a very important part of the personality of the band. I think we've had we've had even on albums like Mandrake, we've had. Um, We've had serious, heavy rockin' stuff like um, uh, Nail to the Wheel. And at the same time, we had stuff like Painting on the Wall or Alien Drum Bunny Save Us Now and, and All the Clowns, which was not really completely serious. Same goes for Hellfire Club. Laboratory Love Machine was right next to tracks like um, Under the Moon or Mysteria. So that's always been a very important part of the band. And I think what is a big compliment is that you cannot really call, you cannot really say what kind of music that guy's playing. Some people say, it's a power metal band. Yes, I know what they mean, and maybe they're right, but there are other people who say at the same time, oh, it's a glam metal band. Yeah, some songs, you're right, but not really exactly. Some other people say, oh, it's an it's a, it's a AOR band. 9 to 9, for example, is an AOR track, and also stuff like King of Fools is a heavier AOR track, if you like. Yeah, maybe we are, but at the same time, you know, cut a long story short, I think we are Edguy. And that's, a, that's the, the best thing you can say about a band. We're bigger than, not bigger, but we're, 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 we're above the pigeonhole that especially music industry people want to squeeze us into. I think. Does that make sense? I think so. Hey, you fans are perceptions of reality But what's the difference anyway? The devil you don't know Show rage war Well, I think... Um well, the, big, the biggest challenge on this song was, was not to, to make the music, I mean, because this is uh, just uh, you just play the riffs, the keyboard play with an electric guitar and put some chords and do some uh, powerful drumming, and then that's basically it. I mean, the, the key on this song is uh, the, the vocals definitely, because they are really, really, really hard to match, and I think also for two, it was a really big challenge not to 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 get close to the original, but also remain Toby and. <laughs> Uh, we, we said from the very beginning that if this song doesn't turn out to be really great, then we just don't put it on the record. But uh, it is on the record, so we thought it's quite good. <laughs> yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> It's a ballad, so it has to have personal lyrics. I think all the lyrics are personal in a way. You know, some songs may come across a little more tongue in cheek than others, but still, they are. They all have a, a real meaning and a serious meaning. And "Alone in Myself" is a song. It's about the feeling that you have when you when you realize that you're probably uh, when 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 the intention of of what you say or do gets lost in translation. Sometimes you have the feeling that the world around does not really perceive things the way they should be perceived, you know? And it's it's about feeling isolated, basically. It's about feeling, everybody knows the feeling when you don't find the right words or when you think you find the right words, but they don't come across the right way. And I'm not talking about about everyday stuff necessarily, you know, like, like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. It's just when you really feel misunderstood from the bottom of your heart, when you just think, um, if only you could understand it. Sometimes, it, like, you speak a completely different language, and sometimes, you know, I have the feeling that a lot of people around me are run over 
by what I say and the way I behave, but at the same time, I can just ensure that I'm not an asshole and I just don't want to, uh, you know, s stand on somebody else's feet or shoes, you know, I just don't want to hurt anybody and sometimes it's like, especially there's been, when, when you're in public, so many people mistake what you say, you make a comment on stage and everybody says, oh, what an arrogant asshole, I've never been arrogant. And I've never really wanted to hurt anybody. And that's something that, alone in myself, combines all those things. It's just pretty much a song about, you know, feeling isolated because words are getting lost in translation. So. Well, the limited edition is going to be a house of what, yearbook? It's an yearbook. It's like pretty much a coffee table book. And uh, a, co a coffee table book portraying the band's history. And why did we do it? We did, we did it because uh, that when you ask yourself what would you want to have of your favorite band, that's, that's pretty much exactly it. That's something that I would spend money for if if it came out, you know, by a band of Kiss or Aerosmith or My Heroes, I would definitely want to buy it. And it's great. We just, we've been going through old pictures and it portrays the band. It was great memories when you look at the old pictures we have in there from the early years of the band looking at us and said like, wow, that we didn't even have a record deal back then. It's just great to look at those pictures and I think it's worth sharing them. And I think it's some, it's some, it's a real, it's, it's not a bullshit, Limited edition, it's a real collector's item. And that's something that, I mean, that we can be proud of and everybody who can manage to get one. It's really limited, it's not one of those made up limited editions, you know, like, okay, the first 70,000 are. No, it's really limited. I don't know how many copies, but in the end, there will be like 3,000 worldwide or something. So it's really a collector's item. And it's great. It's really something that I'm looking forward to holding my hands. You know, I've just seen the digital, uh, the digital layout, but if, it's amazing. On tour in the middle of October, yep. uh, we're going to play Paris and Lyon. Exactly. And we're going to play the venues which he is uh, just. I, 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 on I, I his don't find phone. it. I don't find it. I have it on my mobile phone, but I don't find it right now. Anyway. But Paris isn't too big anyway, so um, there might be only one show on uh, this certain month, October. It's going to be one night, one night in Lyon and one night in Paris. <laughs> yes. Google it. Google it. Um, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, we play, we play other shows in other countries as well. <laughs> that's it for France, for, for this. Yeah, 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 France, yeah, for France. It's, it's like one, one night, remember it. Google it. It's going to be Edgar Live Space Police Tour one night in Lyon and one night in Paris. We will be there and we will be ready to play some uh, nice heavy metal tunes. Yeah, one night in Lyon and one night in Paris. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> oh, I'll be talking to the fire below. Oh.